Hi everybody, welcome to your 12 o'clock yin class. Um, I teach this more restoratively, so grab some props if you have them at home. I grabbed a bed pillow and I have two yoga blankets folded. I also have two blocks, so anything um, to make your practice more comfortable is really what the goal is for today. Um, before we start, I wanted to just briefly talk to you about a mudra I want to introduce to you today. It's called Ushas Mudra, and a mudra is a seal, if you will. Um, and so what this mudra is, is it's so perfect. I'm actually going to read it right out of the book because I think it's spot on for where we're at um, right now at like just being at home. So first off the mudra, you just take your hands, your fingers and interlace them gently like so. And so once you have your hands interlaced, you're welcome to place them on your mat. Once you have yourself situated, um, you can be seated, you can be lying down with this mudra. I'm just going to read a little paragraph about what Ushas Mudra is and how it can play right into what we're doing at home um, for this, these last few weeks. So Ushas Mudra means dawn and Ushas Mudra supports us in welcoming each day enthusiastically as a field of infinite possibilities. And I know that feels pretty overwhelming right now to greet each day, um, even though it feels like Groundhog's Day, um, day in and day out, but it's all about our, our thoughts, right? And so as we embrace each day more openly with fewer expectations of how things should be, stress and tension are reduced naturally. By welcoming each day more, positive, more positively, we release the judgments we hold about ourselves and others, allowing us to celebrate life as it is, rather than complaining about how you would like it to be. When we embrace, when we embrace each new day as a field of appreciation and learning, we are able to live in the present moment more completely with greater presence and appreciation of all of our talents and possibilities unfold naturally, creating a cycle of well-being, vitality, and creativity. This mudra directs your breath to the entire torso, <clears throat> yogic, our, yo our full yogic breathing. So it directs breath, awareness, and energy while it naturally instills a sense of harmony. So as you're staying in this position, whether you're sitting down again or lying down in Ushas Mudra, let your eyes be heavy. They can be open, they can be closed, whatever suits you best. And just start to breathe. First, breathe naturally and notice the breath as it comes in and out of your body. Start to deepen your breath, finding a bit of constriction in the back of your throat as you inhale deeply into the belly, into the upper part of the belly, the chest, the upper part of the chest. And as you exhale, start from the top of the chest and work your way down to the deepest part of your belly. Awakening Ushas Mudra. Let's stay for three more full cycles of breath. One more deep breath in. 
and deep breath out. Allow your breath to return to a natural state. All right, when you're ready to move. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about what class will look like today because it is a more like yin store type class. I do like to keep them quiet. Why is because even though we're at home and we feel like we're sitting down and, and relaxing a lot, it's not the same as truly resting and rejuvenating your body. And so being awake yet quiet and still is really where our parasympathetic, our rest and digest part of the nervous system starts to really activate and helping us to bring down the cortisol levels and just um, the stress levels and really just be in a completely present state. So I will get us in and out of the poses, um, as I always do in my classes at the studio, but um, I'll also keep it a little bit quieter. Um, our poses, won't we, we, I won't hold them as long, so we're looking three to four minutes um, versus you know seven to 10. So, but feel free, this is your practice, you're at home, so if you wanna stay in a pose and think, oh, I'm, I'm okay right where I'm at, and my encouragement is to stay exactly as you are. Okay, let's head on over to the mat. So the first pose that we're gonna come into, like I said, I have um, some folded blankets, I have a bed pillow, and I have two blocks, <clears throat> is Supta Baddha Konasana. So I'm gonna grab two of my blocks, and lay the, or two of my blankets rather, and lay them right down the center of my mat. And then I'm going to grab my two blocks, these are to support the hips. And I'm actually gonna use one blanket today. Um, the blocks are used to support the hip socket, so it's not about supporting the knees. When we're holding poses longer, we don't want the knees to just flop open. It can be pretty taxing um, on, the hip, on the hip sockets. So I'm gonna bring my low back right up against my blanket, and then I'm gonna lay down my spine supported by the blanket. And then once I come down, I'm gonna shift my hips slightly away from the base of my blanket. Now I grab my two blocks, bringing the soles of the feet together, letting the knees splay wide. And my hips are feeling pretty tight. We store a lot of emotions in our hips. And so I'm gonna bring my blocks up to the highest levels. So choose what makes sense for you. And I'm gonna set the timer. And we'll be here for about three or so minutes. And I'll call you out. I'll let you know about when there's about a breath or two left. And then I'll call you out. One hand can come to the heart space, one hand to your navel space. If you'd like to bring your hands in Ushas Mudra, you can interlace your fingers and just gently rest them on your belly. Try not to focus too much on your breath. Just let it come naturally. Try to make sure your body is as comfortable as possible. This is about tapping in today into the nervous system. Let your shoulders gently roll down towards the floor. Chin gently lean lifting away from the chest, lengthening the back of your neck. We're not working towards feeling any deep edges in class today. This is truly about restoring the body, the nutrients in the body that get depleted when we are in our fight or flight or our sympathetic nervous system. You might start to no notice that as you quiet your body, as you become still, all the thoughts pop into your head and know that that's natural. So my suggestion today would just be to notice them, to, to listen 
to be the observer, but that's it. Once you see them, notice them, hear them, let them go away. Try not to label them. Try not to give a story around your feelings, but fully feel, let it go. Take two more rounds of breath. One more. And when your body feels like it's ready to move, if you have blocks supporting your hips, gently remove them. You can use your hands to gently lift your knees up towards the ceiling Heel toe your feet towards the edges of your mat and just let your knees stay hugging in towards each other a bit. Take one more round of breath. Gently separate your knees several inches. Heel toe your feet in so they're about sit bone width. And let your knees fall over towards the right side of the room, the right side of your mat. Bring your head to rest on your arm. And slowly begin to press yourself up into a seated pose. Okay. So once you come into your seated pose, we'll be getting ready for our next pose, which is going to be Janu Shirsasana. I am using um, a block in this pose, or actually two blocks. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is extend my left leg long. I'm bringing my right foot to my inner thigh, and this is where my first block comes into play. I'm gonna take it to support the outside of my leg. Again, I'm not, I don't want my leg to just flop open because I'm going to be holding um, this pose a little bit longer. My second block, I'm putting on the inside of my left leg, so when I round forward, I'll have support for my head so I'm not just hanging in space. So once you have your block set up, I have mine on the highest level, choose what makes sense. You wanna be able to hold it comfortably without being bothered by any sensations that you're feeling. You'll take a deep breath in, and then exhale, round forward over the front of your thigh, letting your head softly come to the block. You could take a blanket and put it on top of your block. You could bring it down a level. So take a few moments to get situated and again, we'll be here for about three minutes. Now normally, if we were in a vinyasa class, I would have you draw your left toes back so you can create some length on the back side of your body, on the left side. But today, just let your foot fall. Let it open up the way it needs to. See if you can lift your chin away from your chest just slightly. We never want to feel pain 
during any of these poses. Pain feels like heat, like a shooting sensation in a body part. And there's a, there's a difference between pain and discomfort. Discomfort feels like a gentle stretch. So check in with your body, understand how it's feeling, know if you're safe, and then just come to your breath. Take one more breath in and out. And when you feel ready to move, use your hands to gently lift your torso off of your props, walking yourself upright. Take a moment to move your props out of the way. Extend both legs forward and just give it a little shake out. And then when you're ready, <clears throat> we'll switch the sides. Extend your right leg long. Bring the sole of your left foot towards your inner thigh. Block supporting the outer leg. Remember, you're supporting the hip socket. I have my block on the inside of my right leg, and I changed it. I went down to the middle level. So make any appropriate adjustments that you need. Blanket on top of the block. And then once you're ready, try to create some length in your spine before you take your fold. So take a nice deep breath in. Chest lifts and extends over the blanket and block. And then you can let your head go to one side or the other or forehead straight down. Soften your right toes. I notice that when I sit in this pose in particular, I I think, oh, I'm relaxed, I'm doing okay. And then all of a sudden my body will change and so it'll soften. And I realize how much I'm still holding on to tension, um, maybe unconsciously. And so give yourself the grace if your body needs to move or make an adjustment, it might just find, you might find that it's softening more, giving you more space to move into. Try not to force it or let it, try not to force it, but instead let it happen on its own. It's a really lovely process to experience naturally. Don't be afraid to notice what's coming up as you sit in stillness. Awesome.
oftentimes we busy ourselves with tasks. I know that I do even here at home. So I can, sometimes I feel like maybe running away from what's truly going on with my emotions, with, with what I'm feeling. And so taking these opportunities to stop and to be okay with not feeling great with what's coming up is okay because it doesn't last. It will change. Keeping in mind that nothing lasts forever. You have two more rounds of breath. One more. And when you feel ready to lift your body off of your props, do so slowly, taking your time as you lift up. Go ahead and take your props off to the side. Extend both legs forward, give them a little shake. All righty. We're gonna get into the side body a little bit. So I'm gonna grab two blankets. You can also grab a bed pillow or some couch pillows. <clears throat> I'm going to lay them across my mat. So um, it's parallel, they're, they're parallel to the short sides of the sticky mat. So I have two propped up and I'm also going to grab, um, I have two size blocks. So I'm going to grab my, my um, smaller one. It's just not as high. And then we're going to come in to do, and do some side body opening. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of sit with my knees parallel to my blankets. My hip nice and snug next to the blankets. And then once I get that part situated, I'm gonna take an inhale and I'm gonna lift up the rib cage and lift up away from the hips and come over my blankets. If it's not enough, throw another blanket or pillow down. If it's too much, lessen it. Just play around, it's like Goldilocks. Legs, I like to work my legs straight. Why? Because I. I often find that I'm cold and I'm, I'm kind of always crunching in. And so for me, this extension and length feels, it feels different because I don't do it a lot except when I'm standing. Um, but uh, it, it, it's a nice opening through the hip flexors. Um, it's just gentle and soft. Arm, bottom arm up overhead. Your head can rest on, the, on the, your arm. You can bring, I have a bolt or my, is that my meditation cushion? acting as a pillow. Left hand can come on top. If your hands don't quite touch, you can put a block between your palms. I find that a little cumbersome, so I'd rather bring my hand just in front of my body. So choose what makes sense. And again, we'll hold this for three minutes. This pose right here is a very gentle way to get some lateral flexion. So the side body, the torso moving from side to side, it creates length on the left side if you're over with the right. We don't typically get a lot of lateral flexion just walking around doing our daily tasks. It has to be more intentional so this is a really nice, subtle way to get some length in through the side bodies. If you're you know, on the floor lying down or like watching a movie, it's great for the kids too, especially right now as they're hunched over. 
their computers with online learning. Notice if your body at any point wants to soften a little deeper towards the floor. Try not to resist that, let it happen. Become aware of any thoughts, any sensations that you might be feeling. Remember no labels, just aware. Notice if your breathing changes at all throughout the course of the pose. You have two more rounds of breath. Last one. Now you're welcome to slowly come out of this pose by rolling onto your belly and rolling over to the opposite side, taking your time as you make that transition. Because I don't wanna put my back to you all, I'm just going to switch my sides on my mat. So go ahead and get into um, the second side, the left side. And as soon as I get myself situated, I will start with the three minute timer. <clears throat> we'll start the timer now. <clears throat> Notice any differences that you might be, that you might have from the right side to the left side as your body acclimates to, um, to this, this new side, this left side. You might find that you feel pretty equal with the side bodies, or you might find that one side feels a little bit tighter than the other. And the, and that just can be informative. It can be informative um, for a lot of things, for maybe um, if, if the way you're standing, do you cr kind of crunch down on one side or are you staying lifted um, through both sides, fairly balanced. Um, so it's, it can be just a little, just a little clue on to posture or habits in the body that we, we don't even notice, that we take for granted um, as we move about our day. So again, just use this opportunity to just check in, to notice, to see.
take two more rounds of breath. And then when you feel ready to move, again, you can roll onto your belly. Once you roll onto your belly, you can stay for a moment as long as it doesn't feel like it's crushing your, your stomach. And then slowly press yourself back into a little bit of an embryo pose. So keeping the knees together, you extend back, hips towards the heels. Let your head fall a little heavier towards the earth. And then slowly work your way up to a seated pose. All right. So the next pose that we're going to come into is one of my favorites. It's a reverse Shavasana. And so I'm going to grab my two blankets, but what I'm going to do is I have them um, fold it into a long rectangular shape. I'm going to bring those two right next to each other. Now, if you have a bolster, you would just lie on top of your bolster. So once you have your blankets or your pillows situated on your mat long ways, you're gonna take, you're gonna go ahead and lay down on the blankets. So my collarbones want to be lined up roughly with the edge of my blankets or bolster my hit so the my blankets are hitting me about the upper part of my thigh hands stacked forehead resting on your hands and you can let your heels splay open soften the legs this one will be a little bit of a longer hold we'll hold this one for five minutes i truly love it i feel like it's incredibly restorative it's very calming, um, at least in my nervous system, it really helps bring me down. Um, and that feeling of just being grounded um, on the earth with the belly. So take your time to get yourself situated. And when you are, just allow yourself to feel the support below you. I talk about this in my yin classes quite a bit, but one of my favorite mantras from Thich Nhat Hanh for meditation, for breathing, um, he just says, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. So if your mind is racing and you can't quite get it to settle, as you breathe, Focus on just those little words, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in, breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. When you give your mind, your, the monkey mind, the chatter, what it needs is a job. And so give the monkey chatter a job of just paying attention solely to the breath, the inhales, and the exhales.
if you can use your exhale to help you settle in a little bit deeper, softening. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. Breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Take two more rounds of breath. One more. And once your body feels ready to move, slowly begin to press your palms into the mat, curl your toes under, Press yourself up into a tabletop pose. And then once again, back into embryo. Elongate the spine. Let the head drop towards the floor. When you're ready, slowly begin to work your way back to a seated pose. Alrighty. <coughs> The next pose that we'll come into is Ardha Mandukasana, which is half frog pose. And so I am going to use my two blankets. You absolutely don't need to, but it's nice to have some extra padding. My first blanket, I'm going to lay again parallel to the short side of my sticky mat. My second blanket, I'm just going to unfold so it's a larger rectangle. I'm just going to put it out on the right side of my mat. And so as I come into this pose, this will be the support for my knee and the bottom half of my leg. So as I come into this pose, I'm going to come down onto my belly. Once I'm on my belly, this blanket is just, just a little bit of lift, a little bit of, su of support for the upper body. I'm going to take my right knee and I'm going to bend it. Now, I'd like for you to work on your knee coming right out from your hip your ankle being below the knee, toes pointing towards the right side of the room. And then you'll take, we'll be in this pose for three minutes, but you'll take your hands and stack them and place your forehead on stacked hands. You can also look to the left or to look to the right, whatever makes sense for you today with your neck. So choose appropriately and uh, I'll call you out in a little bit. So hips can store <clears throat> quite a bit of emotion. <coughs> Excuse me. So if anything comes up for you during these next three or so minutes, again, I keep going back to that, that observer, the seer. So just kind of take note to what's coming up and allow yourself to be in it, even if it doesn't feel amazing. Um, one of my favorite books, again, Thich Nhat Hanh, um, No Mud, No Lotus. The lotus flower, before it blooms, lives in dark, mucky, murky swamp water. And as it emerges, it comes up pristine, clean, free of debris. Such a metaphor for life. We think that everything is good vibes only, and it's such a disservice to ourselves and to others to put that on them. Things aren't always great. They're not always good vibes. And so it's okay to sit in the dark. It's okay 
to be uncomfortable with our thoughts and our emotions as they arise. So give yourself some grace as things may come up. Allow yourself to be in it, to sit with it, and to eventually try to move on from it. Can you soften your toes and your ankles? Can you let your hips be a little heavier towards the floor? Take two more rounds of breath. And when you're ready, gently bring your right leg back to meet your left. Maybe bend your knees and take a little windshield wiper or some circles from side to side. Go ahead and grab your blanket if you used it for your right leg. Transfer it to the transfer it to the left side of your mat. And then we'll switch our sides. Right leg extends straight back, left leg comes out from the hip. Left toes pointing towards the left side of the room. Rest fo your forehead on stacked hands. And we'll begin. Notice if there's any spots that you're holding tension in. They might be your hands or your jaw or your feet. Can you find a small release in those extra tense spots?
Take two more rounds of breath. One more. And when you're ready to move, extend your left leg straight back once more. Bring your forehead back on stacked hands, bend your knees. And take a few moments to just windshield wiper from side to side. And then when you're ready, slowly begin to work yourself up back to a seated position. Alrighty. <clears throat> so the next pose that we're going to come into, I am going to grab, I have a, a pretty um, robust bed pillow um, that nobody uses because <laughs> it's very um, hard or yeah. So um, I have this big bed pillow. You can, if you're close to a couch or a chair, even your kitchen chair, um, I have like a love seat right here and you can just put your heels on the top of the cushion so your legs are at an incline. I'm gonna show you what that looks like with the block, but you'll get the gist pretty quickly and then um, you can figure out the best way to put yourself into this pose. So I have my two blocks just stacked um, and I'm going to take my bed pillow and I'm just putting it on top of my block. So I have this nice incline and then I think I'm going to bring this for my spine, for my spine today. And so what I'm going to do <clears throat> is bring my legs up on my bed pillow or bolster. I'd like this other blanket that's the rectangular, the narrow rectangular shape for the length of my spine. Now, I just so it happens, I have an extra blanket. And so I'm gonna put that, I love a sandbag. If you have a sandbag, they're so delightful um, over the ankles. If um, you don't have that, just an, an, a little bit of like a, like a blanket or another pillow to go across the ankles just feels really lovely to have, plus my toes are cold. So I wanna be comfortable and I hope you do too. So we'll be here again, we're just holding these poses mainly today for three minutes. If you're finding delight in the shape, just stay as long as you need. So when you're ready, find yourself nice and situated, this nice incline with your legs. And I'll start the clock. can come back to Ushas Mudra once more.
Take two more rounds of breath. One more. When you feel ready to move, gently slide your feet down your bolster or pillow. Hug your knees into your heart space. Slowly roll over to one side, rest your forehead, or pardon me, rest your head on your arm. And slowly press yourself up to a seated pose. <clears throat> so the last pose that we will come into is happy baby pose. And this happy baby pose, I really like it. I like using um, the blanket for happy baby pose and I'll show you how do we do that. Now, if you don't want to take happy baby, um, take a supported bridge pose if you'd like, um, or any other or any other pose um, that really is calling you right now can be um, truly can be anything that your body is craving. So I have my blanket and I'm gonna roll it nice and tight. So I'm taking it from this larger rectangle and I'm giving it a pretty snug roll. And again, I'm gonna lay it so it's parallel. Um, to the top edge of my mat and then once <coughs> excuse me my allergies I've been walking every day and my allergies have been off the charts I don't know if yours are too so I have my tight rolled blanket and then I'm gonna sit right up against it now as I sit up against it, I'm gonna lie back on my back and as I go onto my back I'm gonna use my feet to roll my back just a little bit. I'm gonna roll back a little bit further so my head comes to the top of my mat. Now, when, and you'll play around with it. You'll, you'll get the feeling of it. So once you have the low or the, the blanket under the small of your back, even down towards the sacrum, you'll bring your feet up. So now your booty is lifted quite a bit from the floor. Feet parallel. Now, if you can't quite get your big toes, that's okay. You can grab a hold of your ankles. If you have a strap nearby, you can strap your feet. But I have like a very, very light touch on the soles of my feet. Gaze is straight up, neck is long, and then I'm just letting gravity do the work. I'm not pulling anything down. My hands are lightly touching my feet and I'm just softening towards the floor. And we'll be here for just a few minutes, probably Probably more like two. Okay. If at any time this, this becomes too much, you can always bring your legs together and let your heels just fall down towards the floor, hugging your knees towards your chest. <clears throat> you can play if you need to find some movement, you can extend one leg. If you do find some play, some mo like some movement, try to, if you extend one leg, ho hold it. Hold it for a few breaths, maybe three breaths, before you switch it out to the other side and move into both legs. there. So if you're finding any type of discomfort, <clears throat> take your breath to that space of discomfort. Remember, no, notice the difference if there's pain versus just being a bit uncomfortable. Know your limits. Be truthful with how you're feeling. Don't push past anything. We want to see you on your mats when we open.
Take two more rounds of breath. One more. And then when you're ready, gently guide your knees back towards each other. One foot down to the floor. They're going to be the opposite foot to the floor. Lift up your hips. Slide into the blanket out. Extend your legs long and then give them a little shake. Our final pose will be Savasana. So get yourself nice and comfy. If you want to put a blanket, filling um, the space between the floor and your neck, especially if there's quite a bit of space between, um, between the floor and your neck, um, fill it with a blanket. It feels really lovely. You can put again a blanket over your ankles and I will call you out in just a few minutes. Begin to bring a deeper breath to your space, to your body. Find gentle movements through your fingers and your toes. If you would like to stretch your body, full stretch, reach your arms up overhead. Reach long through the front side, through the back side. Exhale, surrender to your space. Roll to your side, whatever side calls you. If it's left, more lunar, more feminine. If it's right, more solar, more active. Choose what makes sense today. And then gently press yourself up to a seated pose. You're welcome to bring your hands to heart space in Anjali Mudra or stay in Ushas Mudra. Spine is long, eyes heavy. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice this afternoon. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. I bow to you all. Namaste.